Apple have made some changes to the display setting in macOS Sonoma, particularly when it applies to Apple Pro displays. I'm going to explain to you what these changes are. How does this affect you? If my calibration method that I've showed you to work with these Apple Pro displays still work or not? And I'll also give you some tips as well. So let's find out together if this is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Apple Pro Display Calibrator is a new feature in macOS Sonoma that affects Apple Pro displays, which includes the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro Liquid Retina XDR displays. These are their 14 and 16 inch laptop that was released from year 2021 and newer. Their 27 inch Apple Studio Display that is the 5K model and Apple Pro Display XDR. For this demo, I'll be using my 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro chip. However, if you have any of the computers that I mentioned before or Apple Pro displays, this guide will apply to you as well. So if we go into System Settings and Display, you will see that the interface for the most part looks very similar to Ventura. And if I go into Preset and click on that drop-down list, Apple have also included all these reference modes. Now if you want to learn more about the reference mode so you can get the most out of your Apple Pro displays, I'll leave links to those videos in the description I highly recommend that you check them out. Right below that, in the bottom section, we now have the option to calibrate display, but the option to do a fine-tuned calibration is no longer there. So if I click on this, we now have a new dialog, and this is the Apple Pro Display Calibrator. And there's three options I can choose from. I can run a full calibration, a fine-tune calibration, or a visual fine-tune. Now, the option for the full calibration was available for Apple Pro Display XDR Ventura and is another option on that drop-down list. However, Apple have combined this and also extended the full calibration feature to the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro and also Apple Studio Display as well, which I find rather interesting and is also a good thing in some senses and in some other senses, you're gonna find out it may not be the best thing possible. So you will see on the bottom as well, it's gonna give you some more information saying that this calibration will apply to this display. This is the one built into my MacBook Pro. This is serial number, the calibration itself, whether this was the original factory calibration or it was something that was done afterwards and fine tuning, whether it was done or not. Right now, I have no adjustment. Now, the other thing I also wanna point out right now too is that full calibration, I can select that. However, fine tune and visual fine tune are pretty much grayed out. Why is this the case? Well, let's address that first. I'll cancel this out, and if I click on that drop-down list, we can see that I am now in Apple XDR display. Or you can have Apple display as well, just the P3, for example, 500 nit. If you have the Apple Studio display, it will pretty much be the same thing, Apple display. These are the casual, I would say, user mode for the display, meaning that you can go in and adjust the brightness, you can apply true tone and everything. However, in any of these mode below, these are the professional reference mode, which sets your display to a fixed brightness. You have to be in one of those mode in order for you to access all of the other options to do the fine tuning. So for instance, if I put my display into photography P3D65 and I go and click on calibrate display again, you will now see that full calibration, fine tune and visual fine tune are available. Perfect. So let's talk about these three options and two of them are new. Fine tune calibration I've talked about before. I have done an extensive guide on how to go through and fine tune your Apple Pro display. And I highly recommend that you use that guide because it's still valid and it's still going to get the most out of your Apple Pro display. So first, what I'm gonna do is link all these articles in the description so you can check them out yourself too. But you can literally go and search calibrate your Mac on Mac OS Sonoma or Mac display and there's gonna be a list. So this first method apply to any other Apple display or any third-party display link up to the system, and this is a visual calibrator, which is not the best thing to do at all. I highly do not recommend that you do that because you're relying on the human vision, which can be highly biased. All right, and then you're gonna see here that there's a note saying that if you have one of those pro displays that I mentioned, you want to click on this link to customize them. So it will take you to this page to which it will explain the full calibration, fine-tune calibration, and visual fine-tune. So in full calibration, it will recalibrate the white point, primary, luminance, the gamma response to you, of your display, and you use this option if you have a compatible spectro radiometer. Now, 
Once I really go over what it does and show you the device, you're probably not gonna really wanna use this option. But in essence, this full calibration really allows you to go in and from my understanding is adjusting the LUT, the lookup table on your display, like a hardware calibrated display, which is really cool. The only issue about this is that when you're doing this, you're limited to just one color gamut, and that's pretty much the color gamut of all Apple displays, which is P3. For instance, if you get a third party, hardware calibrated display to use with your Mac, for example, BenQ SW hardware calibration series. Well, with those display, you can use BenQ software, Palette Master Ultimate, and run the calibration in any color gamut that you want to work in. You're not just limited to P3 color gamut. So that's the big difference between the two. But seeing that Apple is opening this full calibration, this full LUT adjustment to not just only the Pro Display XCR, but to these other Pro Displays in a lineup as well, is really impressive and is to me i'm excited to see this even though i'm probably not even going to touch or use these feature at all then we have the fine-tuned calibration which many of you have done following my guide already and this will measure and adjust the white point and luminance value to the expected value of your target essentially you're doing that fine-tuned adjustment use this option as a quicker alternative to the full calibration and yeah it is definitely going to be quicker and lastly there is the visual fine tune which will visually adjust the white point of your display with a color grid use this option if you need to adjust your display to visually match other displays now the visually match other display part you really need to think about that really carefully do you want all your display to match or do you want all your display to be you know true colors as what they can show that is a fairly slippery slope i see why apple is doing it but i also see to that some of us might go in, adjust those settings, adjust those tint that happens and we forgot to change them. Or some of those tint may not apply to all the images or all displays that you're looking at. We're gonna talk more about that in just a moment. So there's a way to reset the calibration for your display. You can read up on that. But what I wanna do is talk about the full calibration first. So I have already explained what full calibration does, which is go in to adjust the LUT, the lookup table on the display. This is going down to the firmware level. And as much as I would say, this is going to be a hard process because it's part of Apple Mac OS, it's not going to be as hard to do, but it is time consuming and you need some know-how still because when you do this, you need to be in a fairly dark or dim environment because of the device that they recommend that you use. Now, there are all these things that you need to do. However, there are devices from two companies, Photo Research and Colorimeter Research. So the moment I search for a device from Photo Research, this is what I'm getting. A device that looks pretty much like the industrial device that are used in a factory or in a professional lab that does all these color testing all the time. And these are huge devices. Now, as far as my Google search go, I was never able to find a price for these photo research devices because they're always saying call for a quote, meaning that it must be fairly expensive and it's most likely a custom built solution. Now, what about the other solution, colorimetry research that Apple recommended? Well, one of the device costs around $16,000. This is the CR300 spectral radiometer or you know spectral photometer you get this just chance to see that there and the thing about these devices as well is that they don't sit on your display like the colorimeter or color spectral photometer that we're used to this sits a little bit away from your display this is why you also need to run these type of calibration in a dim or dark environment and they're not the easiest device to use the other device you can get is a cr250 and that costs close to $10,000 for those. So I'm sure that many of us probably won't be looking at any of these solutions anytime soon. Now, here's the thing. There's the part that talks about before you begin and uh, to complete the full calibration. The one thing that I do want to point out with regards to completing the full calibration is that Apple said this process can take up to two hours with a 30 minute warm up time. So this means that the whole calibration process would take about an hour and a half and that's just only for one color mode i want to highlight something here that when you really go in to do these type of calibration it does take time this is another reason too why when you look at pro displays in a market such as benq sw or pd series those displays generally carry a higher premium compared to the general office display because benq have gone in and fine-tuned not just and calibrate not just only one color but multiple different color modes on the display in order to get the best color possible and in general the process to do these type of LUT calibration the way how it works is that the color would flash these devices would measure the color and then what happened is it will write the result what it's getting into you know the computer or the display memory chip 
to which afterwards it's going to do a validation. If it passed, it moves on, but if it doesn't pass, it will do the adjustment, flash the color again, remeasure, store that data, re-verify that data until it passes. This is part of the reason why doing all these process really does take time. So there's more to the process of calibration. I like the fact that Apple is really bringing this up to the surface. So we can now see that if you really go for intense factory calibration, it is a fairly arduous process and one that takes a lot of time. All right. So there's the fine tune calibration, which we are used to. I'm not going to go over this much because I have gone over this in a lot of details already. And I'm going to try to go through the dialogue in just a moment as well to show us that. And lastly, I've also made the ultimate calibration guide using macOS Ventura to do the fine tune calibration with Calibrite Profile Layer. I highly recommend that you check that out. I might end up doing another guide for this particular macOS Sonoma because the interface does look a little different. However, for the most part, you're going to see that what I've shown in that guide is still valid for this one. Now that we have understand all those different calibration options, let's explore this a little bit more. I'm going to click on the preset dropdown list and click on calibrate display. The Apple Pro Display Calibrator will now show up and now I have the option to do the full calibration, all these things. Let's start out with full calibration and see what that does. So I'm going to click on here. This explains the process. I'll click on continue and it's now looking for a measurement device to which I am stuck on this screen and I'm not going to continue because I do not have that device or any of those devices in my studio. Number one, they're really costly. Most of us will never own that device. And secondly, if you or thinking that instead of buying one, you may be able to get one from like a rental house for a few days and run the calibration on your display. Should you do that? That's a really great question because number one, it takes some time and some know how to do that. And the thing that you have to remember is that when you're running those type of calibration, you're really calibrating it to the reference P3 value. It doesn't really allow you to tweak anything anymore. And I genuinely feel that if you have to go through this method, there is a huge point of diminishing return. Those are the devices that you're going to see in the display factory in, you know, the color labs of these pro display manufacturers that are out there, but you're not really going to see them so much just even like in a studio or even in a color grading studio for that matter. Now, some may have it, majority of them probably not. And part of the reason why I know this too, because I know a few color graders or colorists in Hollywood that are just simply using Apple Pro Display XDR and they're not even calibrating and they're grading movies and TV shows for Hollywood. So your mileage may vary on this depending on what you want to do, but I don't think this is a method that I would recommend that you go do at all, although it is available and I find that rather impressive. Let's go back in there again and this time let's click on fine tune calibration. So. In Sonoma, this is slightly different than in Ventura in the sense that Sonoma makes you enter the information vertically, as you see right now, instead of horizontally, like in Ventura. Not sure why these minor changes are happening, but hey, it works. You just simply measures the X, the Y, and the luminance value. So these are pretty much using, for example, a program like Calibrite Profiler, measuring those value, entering it in, entering the target value in there and the luminance you want, type in the description, and you're pretty much good to go. Even if you're not going to calibrate your display using a software calibration like Calibrite Profiler, for instance, doing a fine tune calibration is still going to get the most out of your pro display from Apple. And lastly is the option to do a visual fine tune. This is the one that I say is a slippery slope. And what I have right now is a screen capture and you'll also see a camera that is filming my laptop screen as well. So when I change these color tints, you're going to see them changing right away on my screen. This can be a good thing, but I think for the most part, it can be a really bad thing because if you change your display to match like another display as originally intended and you didn't change it back, well, your display is now showing that color as a bias. And there's really no telling if the other display that you have is accurate, is corrected or not. And especially if you haven't gone in and calibrate the other display, it leaves a lot of open room for error to happen. Because if you're using an external display that is not of good quality or of good color, and you're really trying to match that, you're really downgrading this professional display quality down to that display. So essentially when you're using this feature to match display, you're going by the lowest common denominator of display that are out there. And the other thing too is that 
You can try to use this function, for instance, to match your iPhone or iPad display. However, you're going to find out that you can only either match your iPhone or your iPad because they're also slightly different. Because the backlight technology is different, because the LCD panel is different. My personal thought about this is I'd rather not use it just because you can match it. If that's your intention, I mean, go for it, but you're going to forget to change it back and then everything you edit is going to be based on that bias. And should you ever print, should that ever go to be viewed on a neutral display? How are you going to know if that's going to still be neutral or not? Now, I know some of you are probably having some ideas and this also clicked for me as well as that, oh, I can use the visual fine tune to adjust the color of my display to the print that I have, especially if my display doesn't match my print fully. And this is the one thing I'll tell you that you should never do. The reason why is because when you try to do this, you're not accounting for all the other variable. What light source are you using to view your print? Are you using just the window light coming in that's changing throughout the day? Do you have a lamp with a corrected color temperature with a high CRI value that you're viewing your print with? These are answers or questions rather that are not answers in these equation before you go in and try to color match. So I would think about this really carefully. Now the other thing that I will also point out about trying to match your display to print as well is that it's going to work, but it's only going to work for those exact print that you're looking at that point in time or those group of images. And the moment you work on a different group of images or a totally different image together, this is something that's not going to work really well anymore. Meaning that you have to go in and fine tune again to which you're now really editing on a display that's a moving target. You don't have a good reference point anymore of what neutral really is in your display. So I would say that if you're gonna use visual fine tune, play with it, use it very carefully and also very sparingly as well. And one thing that I would tell you, for instance, if you apply visual fine tune, I highly recommend that once you're done with the task that you're trying to do, just go in and set it back to neutral. This way you're not constantly editing on your display that is biased. So that's my thought about that one. Anyway, those are some of my overall thoughts about the new Apple Pro Display Calibrator. I think that Apple has provided us with you know, some options here. On the high end, you have the full calibration, which most of us, I would say that 99.9% .9 of us will never do because those devices are not easy to come by. They require to know how to use them and it is a very involved process. And they also have given us the easy way out to things, which is the visual fine tune, which for pros, I mean, is something that I really hesitate recommending that anyone use that. And I would still think that even with macOS Sonoma, Apple Pro Display Calibrator, fine tune calibration is still the best option. So you can get the most neutral and accurate colors out of your display without biasing it using the visual, you know, human like eyes and so forth, or doing the full calibration, which is going to be beyond just you know, the device that most of us can attain. Anyway, I hope that you find this guide helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in our retrust.